Hello folks, I'm going to be doing 10.3 for you for geometry. And this is all about arcs and chords. Now this is a three part lesson, so I'm going to do part one over here and I will try to divide the parts up to make it pretty simple for you guys. So the first one, and we're going to have circles drawn since we are in the circles unit. Sorry if my circles are not uh, incredibly perfect, but I'm doing my best here. All right, our first circle is going to have two chords. I'm going to label these chords A, B, and C, D. Now we have several theorems in 10.3, and our first theorem that I'm going to teach you is if arc AB is congruent to arc CD, then, those lovely if-then statements, chord AB is congruent to chord CD. So to see that in this picture over here, if we have arc AB, if that is congruent to arc CD, then chord AB is congruent to chord CD. We're gonna look at an example of that. And so our example is, let's say that um, AB, uh, arc AB is equal to arc CD, which is equal to 36 degrees. Let's also say that AB Chord AB is equal to 2x plus 3, and we have chord CD equal to 8x. Um, we are given the um, arcs are congruent, so that means that the chords are congruent. We want to find x. And so to find x, we are going to set the two chords equal to each other. 2x plus 3 equals 8x. And we solve from here. So we have 8 minus 2, and that's 3 equals 6x. Divide both sides by 6, and we get 3 sixths for x, but we cannot leave it like that. We do need to fully reduce that, and so we get down to 1 half is our final x value. All right, so we're gonna cut it right there and go down to part two. All right, so part two, we're going to have another circle. That one's a little bit better, a tad bit. Okay, this time I'm gonna call this circle C. I'm going to draw a diameter right through the middle of circle C, and that's going to be labeled A, B. Now for A, B, I'm also going to draw a chord right there, and I'm going to label that chord X, Y. Now, here's our next theorem, if, a diameter, so if the diameter or the radius is perpendicular, so that means a 90 degree angle, to a chord, then it bisects. the chord and the arc. Now we remember that vocab word bisects, it means to cut in half. So let's give us some examples here. And what is that? Actually, let's look at first of all what that means. If it bisects the chord, that means that those two are equal. So let's label that middle one Z. All right, that middle point right there. So XZ, would then be congruent to Z, Y. 
it also means that the arc is bisected. So arc XB, measure of, whoops, that's a X, sorry about that, XB is equal to the measure of BY. So both the arcs are congruent and so are the chords. If and only if that is a 90 degree angle or if the diameter or radius is perpendicular to the chord. So looking at an example then, we have an example here. Let's see, in the diagram, so in circle C, I'm going to give you the measure of XBY, so the measure of arc XBY is equal to 60 degrees. I'm also going to give you that XZ is equal to 7, and I want you to find the measure of arc XB and ZY. So I know that's a lot, so if you're taking notes, just kind of write that down. You can pause the video here. Kind of take in what you are looking at and what you're trying to find. After you kind of understand what you're trying to find, then come back to watch my solution here. All right, so if we have X, B, Y, that's this whole thing right here, here to here, that is going to be 60 degrees. X, Z is going to be seven. Now we are given this diagram. So that means that that is a 90 degree angle because that angle is a 90 degree angle. It's a radius or a diameter that is perpendicular to a chord. Thus the chord is bisected. So automatically we know that Z, Y, uh, I'll put it right over here. Z, Y is going to be congruent to X, Z. It's going to be seven. Now we need to find measure of XB. Both of these arcs right here are bisected. If the whole thing is 60, measure of XB is going to be equal to 60 divided by two. In other words, 60 divided by two is 30. And so measure of XB is going to be equal to 30 degrees. All right, we are going to move on to part three. So part three. And finally, we have one more circle. This time, we are going to put our chords right here and right here. I'm going to label these F, G, and J, H. All right. Let's label this circle, circle L. Now I'm going to draw another thing or another segment here that we have not seen before, but the segment's going to go from the center to the chord and from the center again to the chord. Now, our last theorem is two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. That word equidistant means the same distance from the center. So that means if Let's uh, put some variables here. So um, that point right there is point X. This point is point Y. If LX is congruent to LY, then chord FG is congruent to chord JH. So I'll put that um, here. We have, let's see, two chords are congruent. So I'll actually put it in that terms right there. So chord FG is congruent to chord JH if and only if XL is equal to LY. 
Our last example, if you want to see another example. Uh, let's be given, I'm going to give you that, given that XL is equal to 4X minus 3, and LY is equal to 2X, let's go plus 3. I'm also going to give you that FG is congruent to JH. What I want you to find is X and XL. So X, I want you to find the variable X and as in um, these two equation or these two um, expressions right here. And I want you to find XL as in the segment XL. All right, well, we have two chords congruent. That means they have to be equidistant from the center. So if we are given XL and LY and the two chords are congruent, we can set those two chords equal to each other. We have 4X minus 3, sorry, I'm going to move that camera over, is equal to 2X plus 3, and we're going to solve from here. Add 3 to both sides, subtract 2X from both sides, we get 2X equals 6, and I'm going to have to come up here, sorry guys, X is going to equal... 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So I'm going to actually, let's put that right here. X equals 3. Sorry, I am running out of room. But we've now found X. We also have to find XL. We're going to plug and bet that back in. So let's come over here. 4 times 3 minus 3. And this is, again, we are finding XL and plugging and chugging my variable or my answer for X into my variable X. 12 minus 3 is going to get us an answer of 9 units. All right. Um, the very last thing to remember about this, folks, is that you may use Pythagorean theorem whenever you have a right triangle. Every radii you see are, is congruent. That means if you have a radii and you have a 90 degree angle in both of these, might have forgotten to tell you that, that is a 90 degree angle right there. That's probably important. Um, and when I say probably, that is important. So we have that 90 degree angle. Whenever you have a 90 degree angle, that means that you can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for any missing angle. All right, folks, hope that helped. I will put a picture of these notes at the end and have a great day.